So usually when companies release motherboards, you hear of all these fancy terms, eight plus four phase power design, for example, or even six plus three. But today I've got a special for you guys. Never heard of it before. An eight minus four phase power delivery here on this Gigabyte motherboard. So the story behind this was in the previous Can Yes Fix It episode, came into a motherboard that had a blown up MOSFET. And so what we did with this, and a lot of people recommended I do this in the comments, was just completely knock out the phase. But upon closer inspecting the face, I saw that a few of the phases were damaged. So I decided to knock the whole top line off and let's see if it works. All right, now here it goes. And that's a complete fail. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with another episode of Can Yes Fix It, the episode where you guys send in your broken PC parts and you try and get me to get them to work. So we saw there with that motherboard that motherboard was a complete fail. Did not work even with an eight minus four phase power delivery. No chance of getting that working. So I, I don't know if there's something else I need to do to get that motherboard working. Let me know in the comment section below. But also we have a heap of different graphics cards in the background there. Now the story with these graphics cards was when I moved out of my previous house, I used the oven to oven bake all these computer parts because people were like, dude, throw all these broken graphics cards that you have and you've collected over the last year, throw them in the oven. And I've got hosed on these deals, a lot of these deals by the way, throw them in the oven and just see if you can get them working. So we've got four graphics cards here. And as I said before, I oven baked them, uh, I believe at 185 to, or 190 degrees for like 10 minutes. So I did follow a guide where someone said they got their oven baked card fixed. So I followed that guy to a T because I've tried this in the past and it just hasn't worked, but they did come out. All, all the cards did come out looking pretty good. It looked like that uh, solder had reflowed. So we'll see if that fixes the problem, but I did suspect that at least on two of the cards, the memory uh, was the problem. So if you had a bad memory chip, I don't think oven baking that would bring it back to life. But hopefully some of these other cards here will work. Um, I don't remember specifically which card had which problem, uh, but anyway, we'll quickly fire it up. And if we get a signal out of it, then we'll put the cooler back on because if we're gonna go to the whole trouble of just um, putting the cooler back on and it doesn't work, then that's just a heap of wasted time as well as thermal paste. And not only that, if the card doesn't work, then we can just keep the cooler as well because some of these GPU coolers do come in handy, but let's try and fire this thing up. So this card actually was giving us a signal to the capture card. So we're gonna sideline this, put the cooler back on and then inspect that one after we test the other three. So as we saw there with the Gallus card, that had the same problem as it had last time and that was just the picture coming out of it was just completely munted. So we're gonna chuck that on the trash pile. So this is, I believe, a 7970. It was broken last time and it's still broken. I've tried both the BIOS switches at the back. And the weird thing in two was there was just really no heat coming out of the GPU die itself. So perhaps one of the phases is busted on the VRM, not too sure, but that one will be going in the junk pile and we'll test the last graphics card now. So we did get a signal out of this one, but I'm pretty sure last time this graphics card here was the R9 280, I believe, or something like that. It was the one I got hosed on uh, with the Gumtree deal, but as soon as you boot it up into Windows and installed a driver, the graphics card became buggy, which I would suspect it would be the uh, one of the memory chips. But anyway, it was booting up again, so we're gonna put the cooler back on this card, and also this graphics card here, which I think is the most promising because I believe this didn't give out a signal last time and it was giving out a signal this time.
So there it is guys, the 7870 is now back to life and to be honest, I'm really shocked. I didn't think the oven baking method would work on any of these cards, but at least one of the four cards is now fixed by doing this oven bake method. So that is really cool. So yeah, um, I guess the oven bake method, it can work. And as other people have stated, it is a last resort method, but we now have a revived 7870. The R9 however, as you saw, it just tried to boot up and once it got to Windows, it crashed out. That was the same problem I was having. And since the driver was already installed from the 7870, uh, it was installed after this got in installed and yeah, it just clonked out. So this is a dud as well. So we've got three cards now that are duds, uh, but this one here is working, but let's check out what other parts we can try and fix up because we got a motherboard sent in from Tim. It has an i7-870 and it came in a little bit dirty, but they're just saying that it didn't work. So we quickly gave it a clean up with an alcohol wipe and now it's looking pretty damn schmick. So we're gonna put this on the test bed and see if we can get this to work. So there it is guys, the motherboard here is toast. It is not working. And this chip here does have a bit of rust on it, so that could be the problem. Uh, the i7-870, however, that does work, and that's working really well. So we got something out of this. Uh, thanks a lot, Tim, for sending that in. And this stick here, the one gigabyte stick, surprisingly didn't work on the gigabyte motherboard, but the eight gigabyte stick did. So that was a little bit weird, but let's get on to the next uh, prize that we have here. And this was sent in sort of like it was pre-broken and uh, there is two sticks of DDR3 memory on it. Uh, the Pentium, it's got a Pentium G620, so I'm not too sure if that is uh, any good. Um, even if it does work, I'm pretty sure I couldn't really use a Pentium G620 on anything. It's not that good of a CPU at all, especially when you've got your X3430s for seven bucks, which have double the cores and of course can overclock. Um, this here, so hopefully we can pull some memory out of this if the board doesn't work, but let's fire this up and see if we can get a signal out of it. So there it is, the H61 motherboard, the RAM and the CPU, they all work absolutely fine. So perhaps it was just a bad power supply or a bad graphics card. Uh, the saddest thing is I forgot who sent this in and I'm so sorry, it's been sitting on the shelves for quite a while. And um, I've just, yeah, I've been extremely busy trying to set up the studio and huge backlog. It won't happen again, and I promise that. But this is working, thanks for that, and I'll put this to good use. Uh, let's move on now to the next thing that we have here, and that is a i5-4670K and a stick of memory sent in from Dean. Uh, so he said this didn't work. It might have been a bad overclock, or it might just, the motherboard might have been toast but he wanted me to take a look at it. So we're gonna fire this up and see if it does work. And testing the 4670K out, it looks like it's indeed toast and there's no physical signs of damage or anything uh, smoked up. So what can happen sometimes with CPUs like these is especially if you're auto overclocking uh, some of the VTT voltages can be set aggressively high, like your memory controller chip, for example, and it might not actually be the CPU that dies, but it's actually one of the controllers on board. And so just be careful with auto voltages, guys. You really have to be careful with that. I do suspect that's what happened here. Um, the four gigabyte memory stick, however, that works absolutely fine, so thanks for that, Dean. Uh, this, however, is pretty much no coming back 
from a warped die. So now the last motherboard we have up here is a really special case. Uh, I got this sent in and I'm not gonna name the person's name just cause it's, it's just one of those things that happens and the whole CPU socket here was just cracked. I've never seen anything like it. It was, yeah, the whole thing was just cracked off. So I thought maybe if I position the CPU in the right manner, I can then try and get a signal out of it and start it up. However, that was not to be the case. This was unfortunately just completely toast. Uh, this motherboard, of course, it is a really nice motherboard. Um, it had the FX8350 in it. So uh, what I did for the person was they came around and they swapped the motherboard for a working 970 motherboard. So uh, this one just, yeah, just be careful with your CPUs guys and how you mount them and how much mounting pressure you do place on the CPU socket. I'm not sure how they cracked this uh, whole socket cover off and the mechanism for it, but it just all came apart. And yeah, there's really <laughs> not much you can do with that because CPU sockets, uh, if you replace them, they're extremely difficult to replace. You need some real specialized equipment. Uh, there are people in the world that can do it, uh, but again, for the, for the individual like you and me, it's pretty much completely out of the picture especially for the amount of time and the specialized gear that you need to actually replace the CPU socket. So this one is unfortunately toast as well. So we're gonna drop that in the bin as well. And then we're just gonna take a look at what happened here today. However, before we move on to a recap, right behind me here, I have a special guest on the channel. This is the EVGA SR2, LGA 1366 dual sockets with two X5690s. I just wanna boot it up, see it living and breathing in the flesh. I have to do it. So the EVGA SR2, that is booting up absolutely fine. We've got 12 cores, 24 threads. Now I did have to shut that down pretty quickly because when I got into the BIOS, one of the CPUs was saying it was at 96 degrees. Of course, I'm just uh, free mounting the fans, which I usually never recommend anyone do, unless you're quickly booting up to see if something boots or not. That's generally when you free mount uh, just uh, coolers because it saves a lot of time. Uh, so in this case, the SR2 and the two CPUs are working absolutely fine. Looks like the RAM's all working too. So look forward to doing a build in that. I'm not sure when that'll come because it's gonna take a lot of time because I wanna do something really special with that. But also a big thank you to you guys for sending in the PC parts. Some of them work, some of them don't, uh, but the ones that work, you just salvage it. And that's what it's all about. Uh, especially if you come into broken PCs, just salvage some of the parts that work and then you can mix and match and you'll have yourself a really cheap gaming PC. That's 7870, we gotta stop here because the oven bake method <laughs> did work. I, I'm shocked, I thought it would never work. I've tried it in the past, but this time around, one of the four cards is now revived, it's now working, and it was playing Fortnite absolutely fine. So the oven bake method, it can work as a last resort. That's a testament to that. So give it a go. If you've got nothing else to lose and you don't mind stinking up your house and your oven by the way it does reek when you do it so be careful maybe use an oven that you're not used to using uh, but with that guys if you have any pc parts that you don't no longer need or you just want to send them in and they're broken and you want to see if i can fix them and have a laugh then i'll put my po box in the description below and thank you all for watching and also let me know in the comment section below if you're digging the eight minus four phase power design but also in the note of the broken phases, if you guys have removed them and you have brought a motherboard back to life, let me know if there's anything else I can do to try and get the motherboard working again because of course bringing a whole motherboard back to life is always a good thing. Uh, the micro soldering, as you guys saw with the 2400G, the Ryzen I failed, uh, but I am sending that off to someone in the US. They're gonna show me their micro soldering skills and they reckon they can get it working again. As for me personally, I've tried micro soldering in the past and I am just hopeless at it. It's such a hard uh, trait to learn and it's a lot easier said than done in my opinion. Uh, one of those things I would like to learn however, but it'd just take a lot of time to learn properly. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.